Here we are, day after new comic book day. So, of course, we have that Bolo show. That's right, the Be On The Lookout show. What's going on, guys? It's your host, Brian and Jack from Superman's Comics. And this is that show where we talk about all the new comic book day releases that everyone's been buzzing about. We're talking about first appearances. We're talking about the Reader Buzz books, Variant Buzz books, and then Jack, long-term play at the end. Jack, how's your week been so far? It's been good so far. Definitely a shorter list this week, um, but I think an extra pack list. A lot of books to be really excited about. And for the most part, a lot of people look at this shorter list like a negative, but for me, I would rather see a smaller list with some better targets on it. Yeah, quality over quantity this week, we believe. We're going to get into it right now, starting with those first appearances. And the first one we're going to talk about is that one from Marvel. We're talking about Captain Marvel, number 18. Who's the first appearance we got in this one? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this. It looks like Lori L. That's um, why I let you say it. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I thought it was Laurel, which kind of made sense, like Laurel. But then it really, when you, when you really pronounce it out, it looks like it would be L'Oreal, like yeah, the, like the hair product. Yeah. Um, but this is the half-sister of Carol Danvers, Cree. Um, I got to tell you, this is the first appearance I think has some legs. So we're going to talk about this book in general later, a little spoiler alert. But, um, you know, we saw Star. That's all I'll say. And the connection with this one is even deeper. So, so yeah, we'll get into that. Did you guys pick this up? Let us know in the comments, by the way. But the next one we're talking about the first appearances, it's all girl power on first appearances this week. And we're talking about Wonder Woman number 759 with Liar Liar, right? That's right. And we tipped everybody off about this one in our San Diego Comic-Con coverage when we talked about Mariko Tamaki and her brand new Wonder Woman run, uh, starting with this 759 issue. Eisner winner. Yes, that's right. Eisner winner, best writer. Um, now taking over uh, Wonder Woman and the creation of a new character, Liar Liar, that she was very excited about. It's a character that she thinks is going to really kind of be a... a, a major crucible to this kind of her taking over this wonder woman run i'm excited to see where it's going to go i wonder if it could have that punchline heat so this is one to pay attention to for sure also jim lee cover b i mean come on i was about to say that this one had a great jim lee cover b but we also have some banger josh middleton covers we all know him from batgirl he's done a bunch of great work before that but last year that batgirl cover took off already getting some buzz on some of these upcoming Wonder Woman covers as well. Definitely. So there's the first appearances. So now we're going to shift right over to that next one. And we're talking about the Reader Buzz Books of the Week. And first one we're talking about is that Suicide Squad number seven. By the way, who's the writer of this book? Tom Taylor, deceased, set upcoming Seven Secrets from Boom Studios, and you can still get that, Seven Secrets number one, Boom Studios exclusive virgin cover by Jung Young Yoon at simplemanscomics.com and the 616comics.com exclusive to the channel and to our channel sponsor, the 616comics.com. But Tom Taylor, this is, let me tell you something, Brian. This is the most underrated DC Comics run right now. No one is talking Suicide Squad. And I admit I was late to get on board. And I shouldn't have been because I know Tom Taylor's track record at this point. I think Tom Taylor gets slept on to a degree. The industry sees it. That's why he was the hottest free agent coming into the creator-owned game. And Boom was very fortunate to get him over kind of the Yankees of the independent comics world, Image Comics. But, you know, Tom Taylor, all new Wolverine. He brought Laura Kenny into that character, killed it. Deceased creates his own little universe within DC Comics. Injustice? How about that? The popularity of those comics. Um, people don't realize Tom Taylor's been doing this. And now with Suicide Squad, he said that he was going to have a, a different take. And I was skeptical at first. And once I kind of jumped into this run, there is more emotion in this story. There is a deeper dive into the characters. And this issue in particular, we're getting to the death of Deadshot. And we're not talking about the like deceased death. We're talking about the death death. There's a definite finality in, in the tone of this book. Um, Deadshot has like fulfilled his, his duties to the Suicide Squad and is going to be set free. And, you know, you can't have that. So it, it's really been a great story. It's kind of told the relationship with Deadpool and Harley, or Deadpool, <laughs> Deadshot and Harley Quinn. Um, and 
really, if you haven't checked it out, I implore you to because the great thing is it hasn't taken off on the secondary market. You can pretty easily pick up one through seven on the back issue market. Yeah, I agree. Tom Taylor has been doing great on this run. I'm about two issues behind, but I oh, haven't been enjoying it. to the best ones yet then. <laughs> I know, right? But I was, I was also, when the first issue came out, I was hesitant, right? Because I yeah, ah, picked it up. I actually really enjoyed it. And then I've read it up. Of course, I've fallen behind just with crazy family life, work life, all that good stuff. But the next one we're going to talk about is another banger of a book. And we're talking about that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 52. That's right. Now, this was a sleeper. And there, a lot about this book would have been ignored because everybody thought 53, first appearance of the Dark Rangers, it was put out in the solicit. Well, it was put out in the solicit because we ended up seeing the Dark Rangers in the Ranger Slayer one shot number one. But guess what? That wasn't the first appearance. That was only the first appearance of Rita. I guess you could say the first appearance of the full team or the first full appearance. But the, in 51, we saw the Dark R Rangers show up for the first time. And if you're like, Dark Rangers, what's that? It's villains. Basically, think Dark Knight's metal. So you're getting kind of an evil version. Um, and these characters, were there was a lot of anticipation coming from them for 53. Hit people out of nowhere at 51. People are sleeping on that issue. My hardcore Power Ranger people are hitting me up like, why is the incentive not going for more money? Why are people not jumping on this one? So this, this has a little bit of that Ninja Turtles heat where I feel like it's going to creep up on people, especially when they figure out where this is going with issue 55, ending the run, and then moving into Mighty Morphin number one and Power Rangers number one. So this, this is a good bridge issue. I think 53 will have a higher print run as people were anticipating that number one that first appearance that then isn't going to be a first appearance, but definitely the dark Rangers will be front and center. And I think as long as the dark Rangers are a part of this story, um, this story is going to be hot. Yeah. And if you want to know more about this story and some of the backstory and where it's going, boom studios did have a great San Diego comic-con panel yes. about, just specifically about power Rangers, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It was one of the better ones of the entire convention. And speaking of Power Rangers, you guys may or may have not noticed, if you haven't been checking out Burke's Family 54 Comics on YouTube, you definitely need to check it out. But he launched the exclusive announcement for our exclusive variant for Draken New Dawn number one. Right, Jack? That's right. We've got a beautiful Steve Morris cover. If you're not familiar with Steve Morris, he did that really cool Power Rangers connecting cover set a few years ago, as well as the recent Torpedo Comics 50 companion set really amazing painter and he did this awesome cover to picking drac and one of the rare helmets off in almost his full jason david frank glory um and with that kind of uh planet of the apes homage rita statue in the background um and if you've read ranger slayer then you can kind of read into the whole being up in the clouds and everything else. Beautiful cover. We couldn't be more thrilled to enter into the Power Rangers market with this cover. And I say enter into the Power Rangers market because we are going to be doing more Power Rangers covers. This is the very first. And you will see them all exclusively announced at Burke's Family 54 Comics on their YouTube channel. So be sure to be subscribed to them. Make sure you hit the bell notification so you know when they're going to be dropping more information on Simpleman's Comics Variants, but it will go on sale this Saturday at 2 Eastern Standard Time, and it's $24.99, 500 print, all undressed and limited. So that will be available on Simpleman'sComics.com as well as the 616comics.com. But that wraps up the reader buzz, so we're going to roll right into that variant buzz section. You all know that last issue, I was talking about like, gold lantern but here we have legion superheroes number seven with a ryan sook one in 25 variant featuring gold lantern on the cover that's right we move beyond just these him and as design variants and now we're going to start seeing these throughout dc comics i've seen they're also doing we talked about this with our san diego cover superman 25 with that new villain on the cover as well i think anytime you're going to get a hot new character it seems like a lot of these DC runs are starting to get new characters added into them. Gold Lantern certainly had a lot of people's attention, and I think a lot of people's attention will be on this book. So already pre-selling for about $50 uh, a few, about two weeks ago. Um, I think this one has dropped down some uh, as we get close to Reese, but that's pretty typical. Either way, there's a lot of attention on this Gold Lantern. There's always attention on the new colored lanterns. I think that it, 
people mistake this as like it's almost a brand new character. This is another addition to the Green Lantern mythos. So any diehard Green Lantern fan is immediately going to be on board with this. Yeah, if you watched last night's Three Up, Three Down, we talked about how Dynamite was on the cold portion, but also how they have some great stories and some great covers. This next one we have is a Dynamite one, and that's Red Sonja Vampirella meets Betty and Veronica. Say that five times fast. Number 12, we get that Cat Stags, Bill and Ted's homage variant. Yeah, perfect timing too, right? Because we just had another Bill and Ted trailer. We just had a Bill and Ted panel at Comic-Con, and we get the news that Keanu, they don't want to hold this movie back. They're putting this thing out there. It's hitting theaters and video on demand at home simultaneously September 1st. So you're going to be able to watch this thing in your house very, very soon. Uh, and I think that has gotten everyone excited. So it's a perfect time for a Bill and Ted homage to be coming out. Um, we've seen them before. It, you're not reinventing the wheel, but this is a great one. And it's a great time and great nostalgia. And I got to say, I can't think of a hotter movie and a hotter lead actor to be getting involved with right now, especially with his talk about the upcoming Berserker movie and coming off of three hit John Wick movies or the upcoming Berserker comic book series. See what I did there? I spoke it into fruition in the future. But his, his uh, coming off three John Wick movies that really kind of like brought Keanu back into focus. So I, I think this is a great, great variant right here. Cool. Also, I think this entire series has been a really cool collaboration uh, with Dynamite Comics and Archie Comics with two properties that seemingly have nothing to do with each other, but there's actually a lot of similarities. It's kind of cool. Yeah, and if you're an Archie fan, there's some great damn parent variants as well. Amazing, yeah. But the next one we're going to talk about going back over to Marvel, we're going to talk that Spider-Man Noir number two. There's that one in 25 damn Pinozium variant, right? That's right, yeah. The slots creator uh, killed it on this one. And this one started making its rounds on Twitter. He actually was the one who kind of put the the art out first and said, like, it, he's incredibly proud of this piece. It's one, it's one that he felt really good about, and he should. And he talked about how he appreciated working for Marvel and them giving him the artistic license to do something like this with the big block letters and the color scheme of it, um, which really fits into the noir kind of feel. It feels like a movie poster from that time period. Very, very cool cover. Um, and a character who kind of maybe wasn't really hot. So you got to kind of shout out the artist on this one because I think this one is a cover art sale. I think it's, it's, this book is popular because of the cover art more than it is people really caring about Spider-Man Noir or if Spider-Man Noir number two even being a thing. Then the last one we're talking about in the variant buzz, sticking with Spider-Man, but we're going over to Symbiote Spider-Man number five, the one in 25 variant for that as well. Yeah, same situation, all right? Uh, this is kind of a different look with Venom. Um, and I think you've seen so many Venom covers. We obviously know the fervor for Venom from Venom collectors for Venom variants. Um, and anytime you get a book like this where it's similar to the book we just talked about, where it's not going to be ordered like super heavy. You're talking about Symbiote, Spider-Man, Alien, Reality, number five. Um, and a one in 25 variant from artists people aren't familiar with. But the cover art is different. And because of that, it gets a lot of people's attention. It's sold out at major retailers. And you started to see some spikes in the secondary market. Yeah. So we've gone through the first appearance. We've gone through the variant buzz and reader buzz. Now it leaves us for one more thing. And that's Jack's long-term play. And here we have a book we talked at the top of the video. Jack likes it well enough for his long-term play. And we are talking about that Captain Marvel number eight. Teen. Sell me on it, Jack. All right, well, here's the thing. Fool me once, shame on you. But fool me twice, shame on me. Fool, don't get fooled again. And I ain't going to get fooled again. So I'm not going to make the star mistake, okay? We sat up in here, and we were two grumpy old men, and we were like, we've seen these new characters, and they don't mean nothing, and they don't ever go anywhere, and that's Captain Marvel. But even though there were things that make sense, like, I, I don't care – how people feel about Brie Larson, like obviously Disney's invested in her. Obviously Disney's invested in the Captain Marvel franchise, but it's limited because there's only so many stories you can tell with Captain Marvel. There haven't Captain been. Captain Marvel existed before and there'll exist after. Right, right. And it, and it, and Cap, but Captain Marvel didn't have, it was because there were so many different Captain Marvels. 
the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel has only been around for so long. There's 12, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of story. So I put added value into world building around Captain Marvel than most characters because of two reasons. Number one, a lack of a world around her. And number two, the fact that she already has a movie vehicle to put this stuff out immediately versus every other character you're buying and hoping, man, maybe this character will get a movie and this character will be featured and maybe in a Fantastic Four movie, they'll do this storyline and then this character will show up. It, there's a lot less guesswork when it comes to Captain Marvel. And I think that's a lot of those reasons why Star took off so much so fast. Here, I think you have the same sort of a situation where you have a new character that adds to the universe, but it's also her half sister. And we've already seen like as corny as that is, like the whole familial bond thing, it works in comics, right? I mean, look at Loki. Right, right. Uh, you brother sister relationship works. Father, son, son, father, daughter, you know, all of Cain and Abel, right? It always works that those stories always. So, um, and then the whole aspect of Carol Danvers being like torn between human and Cree and now having this sister who really represents only one side of her and it's a half sister. I can only imagine where they're going to be able to go with stories with that. And, and the way that that also kind of is symbolic of what a lot of families and blended families go through. There's a lot of, certainly a lot of interracial blended families that have had to experience some of the, the things that they could feel. So it, I really think that this is kind of like a slam run, slam, slam run, <laughs> uh, a slam dunk home run type of, uh, of uh, appearance, I, I don't know if it's going to have the same initial spike that Star had, um, but I also think this one was more like it was out of nowhere, but it was obvious, right? Because she's on the cover, it was talked about well in advance. Like people were talking about some of the solicitations in the future that there was. I saw people, uh, Larry Doherty from Larry's Comics was one who was advocating this book a month ago. Um, so there were definitely people who were talking about it but at the same point because of captain marvel a lot of like star it's still not a high printed book and, and it's that still, big empire logo on the book yeah which a lot of people just don't care about that empire storyline um myself included and i think that that i think there's a lot of reasons why this one is gonna the demand is gonna be larger than the supply in the long run so this is what i'm grabbing long term here's the other reason i like it no incentive your two options are your cover A or your Dan Mora cover B. Um, and that's it. And we've seen that be a recipe for success in the past. So that's something I would pay attention to. I would also expect to see um, a second print with a cool cover coming on the way uh, any day now. Yeah, and we did have Dan Mora was on the bolo list for the variant buzz. Yes. But we also talk about when it comes to books like this, especially with big two, we like to go with the cover A, especially for long-term play. But Another pick, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Picked it up, but looking forward to reading it because like you, I stayed off of Captain Marvel because I just wasn't feeling it, but then picked it up and traded and enjoyed the story. And I was also kind of turned off at first from the Empire logo as well, but comics is all about reading, so I'm interested to read and see how it goes. There you go. So there it is, guys. There's the complete bolo list for this week let us know what got what books you guys picked up let us know books that you guys picked up that weren't on this list because we always say it's the buzz that you guys create that helps us make this list each and every week also want to give another thanks to burke's family 54 comics for that announcement and again that dragon new dawn steve morris virgin variant will be up for sale at simplemanscomics.com and the 616 comics.com this saturday 2 p.m eastern mark your calendars set a reminder and we will see you guys in the next video. Oh, man, if you don't